Charis TV. I have the grace. You can't stop me. Okay, let's read Luke 15. I'll take you back to the story of a prodigal son from verse 11. I'll leave Luke 15. To a story of a prodigal son. And he said, a certain man had two sons, and the young of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of thy substance that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there he wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that country. And he began to be in want. Verse 15, and he went and joined himself to one of the citizens of that country. This one, he went to join. And live a life of the citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he will fain have filled his belly with the husk that shrine did eat, and no man gave unto him. But when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. And make me as one of the hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was yet afar off, his father saw him. And he was moved with compassion. And ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. And in thy sight, I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servant, Bring forth quickly the best rope, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and make merry. Amen. For this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field. As he came, drew nigh to the house, he had music and dancing. And he called to him one of the servants and inquired what these things might be. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he had received him safe and sound. But he was angry and would not go in, and his father came out and entreated him. And he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, and I never transgress a commandment of thine, yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But when this thy son came, who hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou killest for him the fetid calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that is mine is thine. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we just read that verse 31? Adam, in, verse 31. Maybe in any version, if 
Can you just get amplified version or King James? This one is key. It's American standard. Get King James version. It says what? It's fine. Amplified said. The father said to him, son, mm. you are always with me and all that is mine is yours. Can you hear that? Uh, this is a story that Jesus was teaching us about oneness with the father. You can see the younger brother decided to say, I've been waking my father. I want, I want to be separated with my father. I want to do things on my own. And the Bible says he went to far country. In other words, between him and the father, there was a boundary. If you say he went to far country, it means there was a boundary between him. Number two, it means there was no communication. But look what happened to him. When he was there, he spent all. Now, after he spent all, now famine came. Can you see that? In other words, the famine waited for him to spend all. There was no famine when he was spending all. But it's after he has spent all famine came. From there, he joined himself and worked under one of the citizens. Because already he spent all with the harlots. You know, the Bible when you become one with the harlot, in fact, when you join the harlot, you become one with me. So, there was no difference between him and the harlot. And, and from there, he finished everything. And he's waking. He's eating the food of a shrine. The Bible says he came to his senses. I just want to ask to read that verse again. In verse 17, he says, verse 17. But when he came to himself, can you hear that verse? It says this man was no longer that person. It's only when he sit down he realizes I have a father. All along he forgot his father. He doesn't want to communicate with him. But when he sit down he said, I have a father. He came to his senses. In other words, he came to the system that his father groomed him. He came to the point where his father wanted him to be. If he might have come to these senses before he left, he was not supposed to have experienced what he has experienced. But now, after he has messed everything, he came to his senses. And he said, no, it's better I go back to my father's house. I've sinned against God. And against God. Let me go and ask forgiveness. If you ever reach a point where you, re you come to your senses, and 
And after you have done, you begin to see that you are not worthy to be called a son. This man, when he look at him, he say, me. I finish everything. I rebel against my father. I have sinned against him. It's better I go back just to be a servant. Because I know even the servants there, they, they are better. Than me who is a rebellious child. And the Bible says he took his journey. And he saw his father saw him by the same compassion. His father brought him close. But you know, I don't want to teach about him. But I want to teach about his elder brother. His elder brother said, I have not done anything wrong. And I have not messed up with anything. And my father has not allocated anything to me. He was, a, he was in the house but owning nothing. And he said when he was coming back, he heard music. He said, What is happening? This father is strange. For example, the person leaves the church. And I'm still here without you a You know, it, it's just like ah, this person. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you found me here. Uh, you know, here the father said, no, Even if I've not allocated anything, to you, all I have is yours. Can you see how we are supposed to receive things from the Father? I want us to look again that verse. Okay, if we look at this one, it says. When this one was already accepted, alright, given the ring, given the shoe, he was already able to Verse 25, he says, his elder son was in the field as he came, my God. The elder son was busy still doing the work of harvesting, And the one who messed up was coming back. Given a suit with the ring. Now they killed the fetid animal. Celebrating And him, he and to What is happening? He says, ah, your brother. But it would the one who was lost was oh, found. Na, la, te, le, na, is to la, la, ah, Ui, le, father, how can you do like this? Marata, ba, ye, kadi, ya, la, this man is worthy for punishment. Ah, wa, mo, na, o, na, this man is worthy to be hired like mo, a na, servant. O, na, no, hiri, wa, ben, you know, the father said, no. Tati, ara, wa. He's my son. Ki, mo, ra, wa, ka. You have to be given that. But, oh, I have. As we stood one place together, it means the one who was lost, what he has been given, that is the only blessing he has. Whatever you see, the one who was lost being given must not intimidate you if you are one with God. Because your inheritance is what your father is having. So standing oneness with God makes you to possess everything that the father is having. Therefore, you cannot wait to be given. What is of your father is yours. What belongs to your father is yours. 
You don't wait. You don't ask. You don't ask. It's yours. In fact, you don't wait for the Father to give you. You take. It belongs to you. You know, we Christians, we need to change prayers. Somewhere. We need to stop asking the Father. We need to take what belongs to us. You need to take what belongs to us. What belongs to us. So you just have to say, Father, I am taking it. Father, I am taking this. 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 Father, I I don't know if you're hearing that. I can That's what, I say, what belongs to my father is mine. Look here, you are surprising me when someone is giving a testimony. You always worry and say, when will be my turn? Listen to this. Already the person has been given a small thing that belongs to you. Because that particular person might be given to be encouraged. But you own everything that is coming from your father. I've already met many Christians who are discouraged. And say, but when is God is going to answer us? When I read this, this scripture of saying, you know, you are, you are, you are standing where God is standing. You are only what God is only. Because you have never moved out or do wrong. You are in a position where when you take God won't ask you why. Because what belongs to God is yours. If we read 1 Corinthians 6, chapter 6, let's read from verse 12. You see our oneness with God. In 1 Corinthians 6, if we read from verse 12, it says, All things are lawful for me, but, uh, but I will not be brought under the law. Let me just read again. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. Amen. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Amen. Meat for the belly and belly for the meats. Amen. But God shall bring to naught both it and them. But the body is not for fornication, but mm. for the Lord. Amen. And the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and he will raise up us through his power. Know you not that your bodies are members of Christ. Shall I then take away the members of Christ and make them members of a hallowed? God forbid. Oh no, ye not that he that is joined to a hallowed is one, is one body. For the train saith, he shall become one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. I just want us to look at that verse 17. That if I join with the Lord, I become one with him in the spirit. You, you see what the Bible says? We are joined in the spirit. One in spirit. Yes. 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 The Bible says that you must know that whatever you eat, it comes to your stomach. Yes. 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 And in this stomach, yes. 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 one day will be destroyed. Yes. The stomach and the, you know, one day will be destroyed, but you need to know that if you join with a fornicator, you become one with the one who's fornicating. So our body 
is being is being influenced. Let me say are being influenced. By the spirit that, that are in us. Your body is influenced by the spirit in The spirit in you. If you are one with Christ. Righteousness will be your portion. I don't know if you're hearing that. If your spirit <laughs> is joined <laughs> with the spirit of Christ <laughs> to be one, you will do things of Christ. Because you are one with Christ. How can you be taking everything that belongs to God to be yours? Is when you become one with Christ. One with Christ. One with Christ. You are standing one place with Christ like this. Inside you. You will be able to say, use unto me, not outside. Use inside me. Join with my spirit. Use unto me. Use inside me. Use inside me. Join with my spirit. Is greater than one outside there. In other words, you cannot be intimidated by what is happening around you. If we read this verse again, I want to read it. Verse 17. 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. I was beginning to understand that the Bible says, uh, did he say he who is joined with the Lord will be one spirit with him? He who is joined with the Lord is one spirit. This verse is saying, if we look at you in the spirit, you see there is no difference between you and Christ. There is no difference There is no difference between you and Christ. So if now there is no difference between you and Christ, it means it means you are one with God. Christ is one with God. We are one with Christ in spirit. Christ. And all these things belong to God. What belongs to God belongs to God. You know, if truly you are one spirit with Christ, righteousness will be a portion. I just want to show you in Matthew 5. If you read Matthew 5, that's where you will learn something. Especially verse 6. You know that verse we have, we have read several times. Matthew 5, 6. Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Verse 6. 6. Yes. It says, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled. The moment you become one with Christ in the Spirit, hunger will start. Have you ever realized what this young man, the prodigal son, said? He said when he was starved by hunger. You know, when he came to Russia, I mean, to his senses, ah, he began to say. see that he is in hunger and, and he can be fed when he is going home. It's, it's better. He go, he go home to his father. Because he knew that even if he can be a servant, he will be fed. If we read this way, it says, Blessed are they that are hunger and thirst, for they shall be filled. Righteousness. Because you are one with Christ here, you won't reach a level where you are satisfied. You will always seek God. 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 You will you will reach a point where you say, I want God, I want God. I want God. And then whatever you will do, you will do it in righteousness. I will tell you the meaning of righteousness. You will need God to support what you are doing. 
you will need righteousness means you need the ability of god you, won't do it you need god to support what you're doing provokes the will of god so don't ever say you just do things no. it is possible you can just do things and god is not but now you start to have hunger hunger of doing things that god wants you to do and when you get that hunger the bible say you will be filled what is going to fill you king is so the goodness of god around you what god can provide will come if you see this scripture Start, you must look at your hunger. You must look at your hunger. When your hunger is no longer there, it means you are across the border. You must check your hunger. You won't be pushed to seek the things of God. You won't be pushed to pray. You have hunger. You wake up to pray. You will stay in the word. Because you are not doing it alone. You are doing it, you are one with Christ. And Christ is the spirit. And Christ without the word is no Christ. Christ so you will be pushed. Many of us today, our hunger is gone. Our thirst is gone. Now. The Bible is there. You are seeing it with two eyes. But to open it, it's slumbering. If you want to know that you don't have hunger, you've eaten wrong things. Your stomach is full. Slumbering comes. You must check your slumbering. Why are you, slumbering? Why are you being separated with God? Remember that hunger. Because of oneness with Christ. You know, you are always trying to find something. something you want to do something that God wants you to do. And when you are doing that, the, the Bible says you are seeking him. And when you are seeking him, you will be filled. It means blessings are coming to overtake you. I don't know if you are hearing that. Ask your neighbor. Are you feeling thirsty or hunger? Oh, or you are slumbering. Slumber. When you open the Bible, you slumber. When you open it, your Bible becomes a ball. Bible it over ball. You want to score. You, you are slumbering. Sometimes you find yourself sleeping. Now we are going to talk about it. And your saliva is. And the the idea of your mum loko. Your saliva is okay. it's spraying the Bible. After 30 minutes, because your stomach is full with things, you are not one with Christ. Your stomach is full with, with lies, full with evil. When you are taking the wrong thing, you have to put it inside. And your flesh becomes weak. You your saliva fills the Bible. When you wake up, I wanted to read. Close the Bible. I will read tomorrow. I tomorrow is tomorrow. Prayer, prayer tomorrow. First thing is when there's no good food. Always pushing time. Those who are one with Christ. When they see that, they say, 
they feel something. If they don't do something, they feel because they are not alone. Even process, I do everything because Christ is Christ in them. So the strength of Christ has the ability of Christ and they will be able to do something. I won't blame you if you don't do what God says. Because you are the one with Him. But if you are one with Him, the ability will come. The strength will come. There are some things you will never be reprimanded of. No one will say, stop this. Why do you do this? No, something is in you. When we look at you, we see Christ. We see Christ. I don't know if you're hearing me. Just so when I look at you, I must see Christ in you. The rope of glory. The rope of glory is there. So can you see why we still have Christians who are sinning, doing everything? Somebody asked me and said, why the Bible say? Why Bible I mean, people in the last day they will come to Jesus. They prophesy in your name. They deliver people in your. I say no. They didn't have anything. If you read the scripture, the Bible say He said, "I don't know you." I was not one with you. Because it must start inside. Not outside. You know, sometimes when you receive impartation outside, because it's two things. The one I'm talking about is the Holy Spirit who comes inside you when you receive Jesus. Can you read John 1? John 1 verse 12. You know it. Right, say John 1 verse 12. If you are here, say I hear. Read that verse, Mama. Read verse 12. You say what? Eri. But mm. to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the right, meaning the authority, the privilege. To become children of God. That is to those who believe in the really on his name. You heard that verse? Those who receive him, Christ, Christ is the spirit. You receive him. He said, those who received him. Can you read? It's not only receiving him. Read there. But to as many uh, as did receive and welcome him. And welcome him. He gave the right, meaning the authority and the privilege to become children of God. Therefore, you and Jesus, you are one. The day you accept Jesus, have you not read, have you not read in Acts 19? In Acts 19, Paul, when he went to Ephesus, he says, he found those disciples. Did you receive Holy Spirit when you believe? You say, you say, did you receive Holy Spirit when you believe? What is the meaning of when you start your salvation? When you, when, did you welcome him? He must enter you. Can I tell you something? There's nobody who can make you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But, but, but you can be imparted with the gift. Nobody can take Holy Spirit and say, enter here. No. Because the Holy Spirit, when you believe, He enters you. I don't know if you're hearing me. When we touch you, you can be imparted with the gift. You know, some people are saying, ah, me, I, I can prophesy, yes. You can prophesy with the Holy Spirit. You, you have got a gift. That is why 
because you don't have Holy Spirit in you, what you will do is without holiness. holiness. Without holiness, it's without Holy Spirit. Let me show you what the Bible says. In Romans 8, in Romans 8, Verse 13. There are three things there. Just read. For if you are living according to the impulses of the flesh, you are going to die. But if you are living by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are habitually putting to death the sinful deeds of the body. Stop there, stop there. Listen to that verse. He said to you that if the Holy Spirit is in you, you, you know, putting to death, it's also said to mortify. You will destroy the works of evil. You won't, you won't be part of that. Don't ever say, hey, you know, I'm a man of God, I'm a Christian, okay, I've got this experience in the Lord, we putting to death the works of flesh. Read it again. Read it again. It says, uh -huh. for if you are living according to the impulses of the flesh, you shall die. You are going to die. Uh -huh. But if you are living by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are habitually putting to death the sinful deeds of the body. Stop you there. Will Stop there, Mama. That verse says habitually. It means Irawari. today, tomorrow, every day. You are waking out your salvation. And you are going to live. That's what the Bible says. So now, can you say you can still prophesy with the works of the flesh? You can still pray for people. You can still be out there with the works of the flesh. You can still be You can still be an apostle. You can still be an apostle. Makananisa. Who is not habitually? Yes, this must be your habit. When you are living in the spirit with your one with Christ. With what you, you, are, you are going to claim, you are going to claim that what belongs to God belongs to you. I don't know if you hear me. Listen to this. Stop this thing of begging God. You want to be one with you. You have been begging God. Oh God, oh God. He gave you the spirit when hey, you accepted him. You are one with him. him. Now, if you are one with him, live like Christ. You know, live like Christ. The Bible says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. Now, you are going to die. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. So that verse shows that you must mortify or put to death the works of the flesh habitually. It becomes a habit. It becomes a habit. It becomes a habit. Someone wants to insult you. It's my habit. I can't insult it. Because I've got someone in me. It goes by who is in you. If you become one with Christ, there are things you will never do. I don't know if you're hearing me. I want to speak with my language. Can you say that again? 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 We are used to saying Christianity. Christianity is a gift of the Holy Spirit. It's a lie. Christianity is not a gift. It's when you come together and be one with Christ. And we do things because Christ said we have to do them. And we stand where Christ is standing. We will go where he says we must go. If we can be Christians that believe that, that we are in Christ and Christ in us, 
There is nothing that will make us to, to be discouraged. There is nothing that will make us to be confused. Those that are Christ, that are belonging to God are of Christ and of Christ are of us. There is no property. There is no poverty. Because we have accepted him. We have accepted the Holy Spirit. Now this Holy Spirit that is in us he is in us to show that we are one with Christ Jesus. Let us not live like empty people. It is possible you can preach you are having not the Holy Spirit. It is possible you can prophesy the Holy Spirit not being there. It is possible that is why Jesus said I don't know you I never became one with you I was never in you so I don't know you go to where you belong and he said again and said you are practicing witchcraft or idolatry if Jesus said you are practicing evil the question is did we become one with him elsewhere if Jesus Christ we were one with him somewhere why can he say to us no prophesy, you prophesied, no yes, you delivered, yes. But I don't know you. You know why Jesus was saying something? He said, yeah, why Jesus I know you because we became one. We were together. We worked together. We spoke together. We have time together. We have time together. We have time together. We have time together. Let us wake up, people of God. Let us wake up. I tell the person that is close to you, and live running after anointing. Stop running after anointing and you start from the inside of you. Start it from the inside of you. And start following after anointing. Wake up. That is why Mutu. <laughs> that is why a person will just dream a funny dream. And you start saying, God showed me. Just having fun, just a little dream. Just a small dream. God spoke, hey, to me. <laughs> and the person will mix verses. With the dream. And the person feel like he or she can stand up and preach. There is no preaching when you are one with Christ. If you are not one with the Holy Spirit. You just combine some few verses. I'm praying for you, I'm praying for you. But inside there is nothing. Things start there. <laughs> this thing goes this way. <laughs> A person has just read the three verses. You don't have anything from the inside. <laughs> On the last day, Jesus will say to you, Where did we meet? Where did me and you meet? I don't know you. Because you were doing it, yes. But I never sended you. You sended your own self. You sended yourself. Interpret like that. You sent yourself. You sent yourself. You sent yourself. You sent yourself. <laughs> You send it yourself. <laughs> Amen. If we 
we read this verse, you will see that God loves us so much. Ephesians 4, verse 20. Before you read this verse, it is possible that you can pray, you come to church, you do everything without Christ. Christ as How will you know that? There are some things that happens to you which are contrary to the word of God. You are failing to destroy them. You need to check yourself and be fair for yourself. What is it that I'm failing to destroy them by myself? If I'm one with Christ, I must exhibit the life of Christ. I must show that I'm a Christian. Read that verse. Verse 20. But you did not learn Christ in this way. 21. Uh -huh. If in fact you have really heard him and have been taught by him just as the truth is in Jesus, revealed in his life and personified in him. 22. Yes. That regarding your previous way of life, you put off your old self completely, discard your former natural, which is being corrupt through deceitful desires. And be continually renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh, untarnished mental and spiritual attitude. You and that. put on the new self, the regenerated and renewed nature, mm. created in God. Mm. Created in God. Okay, carry on. Renewed nature created in God's image, meaning God's like, in the righteousness and the holiness of the truth, living in a way that expresses to God your gratitude for your salvation. Mm, carry on, Mama. Therefore, rejecting all falsehood, whether lying, defrauding, telling half truth, spreading rumors, any such of this, speak the truth each one with his neighbor, for we are all parts of one another, and we are all parts of the body of Christ. Be angry at sin, at immorality, at injustice, at ungodly behavior, yet do not sin, do not let your anger cause you shame, nor allow it to last until the sun goes down. Read until 32. And do not give the devil an opportunity to lead you into sin by holding a grudge or utility, anger, or harboring resentment and cultivation, bitter, cultivating bitterness. The thief who has become a believer must no longer steal, but instead he must work hard, making an honest living, producing that which is good with his own hands, so that he will have something to share with those in need. Do not let unwholesome, foul, profane, worthless, vulgar words ever come out of your mouth, but only such speech as is good for building up others according to the need and occasion so that it will be a blessing to those who hear you speak. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, but seek 
Pastor. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, but seek to please him, but by whom you were sealed and marked, branded as God's own for the day of redemption, the final deliverance from the consequence of sin. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, perpetual animosity, resentment, strife, fault finding, and slander be put away from you, along with every kind of malice, all spitefulness, verbal abuse, malice, malevolence. Be kind and helpful to one another, tender hearted, compassionate understanding, forgiving one another readily and freely just as God in Christ also forgave you. All right. I want us to go home and we read throughout there. It's Ephesians 4. Go and read it. I'll tell you why. Because it's talking, we're talking about mortifying the works of the flesh. Now here we are given the rules. That don't do this, don't do this. Because if you know that you are waiting for that day, there are things you will never do. But more so, there's someone in you. You know, there's a law that uh, our Lord Jesus Christ spoke about. He, said, he says, these sums up the law and the prophets. He said, what, what you do to others, you are demanding them to do that to you. It sums up. If you no, want, no, he said, but he said, if you want these people to do uh, things to them, to yourself. Do, do it to them. If, if I want to fight you, if you want, I want you to fight me, I fight you. Uh, you say this is summarized. Paul said in Philippians 3, verse 7. He said, I count everything lost so that I gain redemption. Can you just read read verse, verse 7? Read verse 7. Verse 7. Let us read. But whatever former thing were gains to me, yes. as I thought then, these things once regarded an, adva an advancement in merit, Mm. I have come to consider as loss okay. absolutely worthless. Stop. Read it again. You say these things consider what? But uh -huh. whatever former things were gains to me, as I thought then, you hear that? these things once regarded as advancement in merit, I have come to consider as loss absolutely worthless. For the sake of Christ and the purpose which I have, which He has given my life. Can you read continuing to 11? You say what? But more than that, uh -huh. I count everything as loss compared to the pri priceless privilege and the supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, and of growing more deeply and thoroughly acquainted with him a joy unequaled for his sake I have lost everything and I consider it all garbage so that I may gain Christ and may be found in him believing and relying on him not having any righteousness of my own delivered from my own obedience, the law of its rituals, but possessing that joining righteousness which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith, and this so that I may know him, ex sorry, experiencing, becoming more thoroughly acquainted with him 
understanding the remarkable wonders of his person more completely and in that same way experience the power of his resurrection which overflow and is active in believers and that I may share the fellowship of his suffering by being continually conformed inwardly into his likeness even to his death dying as he did so that I may attain to the resurrection that will raise me from the dead. I want you to close your Bible. You look at me. I want to explain. I'm closing mine. Let me go to the Bible. I'm closing mine. Paul here is saying. Paul here is saying. Paul here is saying. There is merit and advancement. There is merit and advancement. There is merit and advancement. That people can, might be talking about that I've achieved. Paul was also educated. I remember he stayed in Rome in a rented house. And that, that house was a double story house. So he, he was like a rich person. But he said. I counted everything lost for Christ. Have you ever find that what you are searching, some people are seeing them as garbage? Oh, I'm not going to say that. 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 You know, when he said, I want to know him. How will you know someone who's far? He said, all these things, I cut them off so that I must not be disturbed in knowing him. All these things that people are speaking, creating some kind of attachment. I count them zero. They are useless. I want to attain my salvation at the end. What I need to know Christ is to be one with Christ. Knowing Christ is to be one with him. Knowing Christ, tell him, knowing Christ, Christ is to be one with him. Keep watching Charis TV.